Council, as time having arrived, I call the Finance Committee meeting for Monday, February 6, 7 p.m. to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, if we could go to agenda item number one, please. Appointment of Gerald Pierre Paul as a constable in the city of Rockton for a term of three years. Invited <coughs> Gerald Pierre Paul. Mr. Pierre Paul, please come forward to the podium. How are you tonight, sir? Good, sir. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Do you have a statement for the Finance Committee at all? Not, not at this moment. Okay. Councilors, any questions for Mr. Pierre Paul? Mr. Council Fowell. Just, just one question, sir, and, and welcome. Uh, Thank you. And I noticed in your resume that you've completed some constable training. Yes. The, the, the one question I had for you is that you're a constable in the city of Medford. Yes. with an address in Medford, and now you're here in Brockton. So is this, are we now your formal residence? Is this, is this your legal residence? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other questions? I need to take a motion. Motion Council. to recommend favorable. Second. Second. Motion made properly seconded. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. It's going to be sent back favorable to the full council. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Madam Clerk, number two, please. Order appropriation of a grant in the amount of $148,769.39 from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs to the City of Brockton Council on Aging Executive Office of Elder Affairs Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Janice Fitzgerald, Director of Council on Aging. Good evening, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Good evening. How are you tonight? I'm well. <coughs> Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Do you have a statement or? I have nothing to say. Constance, any questions? Motion to recommend favorable. Second. 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 Motion, made, motion made properly second to favorable recommendation. Back to full council. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. That's going back favorably full council. Agenda item number three, please. <laughs> Order appropriation of a grant in the amount of 225000 from the fiscal year 17 safe and successful youth initiative grant to the city of Brockton Police Department for the fiscal year 2017 safe and successful youth initiative grant fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Chief John Crowley, Brockton Police Department. Chief Crowley, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks, good, thanks. Thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Any statement or just questions or? Um, I could just read a brief um, blurb on what the grant's all Thanks, about. Thanks, Chief. <clears throat> it's a grant from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Public, Executive Office of Health and Human Services received in the form of supplemental funds to go to an already awarded fiscal year 17 safe and successful youth initiative grant. We originally awarded 125,000 fiscal year 17. So now with the supplement, we have a new total of 350. <clears throat> provide a targeted list of 60 individuals in the community with outreach, case management, behavioral health, education, and employment services. The old colony Y has been uh, provided to be the subcontractor. Thank, sub you. Thank you. Questions for the chief? Motion recommend favorably. Second. 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 Motion made properly. Second to favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. Chief, you could stay up there. I think you're up for the next couple ones. Madam Clerk, number four, please. Order appropriation of a grant in the amount of $315,586 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security State 911 Fiscal Year 17, Public Safety Answering Point and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal Year 17, Public Safety Answering Point and Regional Emergency Communication Center Support and Incentive Grant Fund, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Chief John Crowley. Brockton Police Department. Chief Crowley, <coughs> statements? Yes, this grant is from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, obviously, State 911 Department, for the purposes of effecting, offsetting either salary and or overtime of certified E911 dispatches or E911 emergency telephone dispatches while conducting the business and answering dispatching E911 calls for service. The funds must be used between the signed contract date of December 2016 and June 30th, 2017. Thank you, Chief. Any questions to the Chief? It's motion. a motion. Motion, motion. recommend favorably. Second. Motion made. There was a second on that motion. Favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, motion carries. Favorable <coughs> recommendation back to the full council. Madam Clerk, number five, please. Order appropriation of a grant in the amount of 13500 from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health Naloxone Grant to the City of Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 17, Massachusetts Department of Public Health Naloxone Grant Fund invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conner, <coughs> Chief Financial Officer, Chief John Crowley, Brockton Police Department. Chief. Move, move favorable recommendation. Second. Uh, on that, I just wanted to, Chief, did you have anything you wanted to read into the record? No. Okay. Motion was made, it was properly seconded. A favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. 
Oh, we have another one. <laughs> Number six, please. Order appropriation of 86779 from the Plymouth County U.S. Department of Justice Fiscal Year 16 Justice Assistance Grant to the City of Rockton Police Department, Plymouth County U.S. Department of Justice Fiscal 16 Justice Assistance Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Chief John Crowley, Brockton Police Department. Chief, anything? I can just add a little blurb on the, um, the grant. It's physical year 16, Justice Assistance Grant funds were received from the U.S. Department of Justice, Bureau of Justice Assistance, with the Plymouth County Commissioner's Office being the manager of these funds for Plymouth County. The funds in Brockton are used for community policing efforts, travel and training purposes, equipment needs, as well as contract services for a vendor for research and evaluation, as well as social workers who provide outreach services while on ride-alongs with police during Operation Divinity, Child Witness to Violence, and the Jail Diversion of Mentally Ill. <coughs> Thank you, Chief. It's motion, motion to recommend favorably to Second. the full city Second. council. Motion was made, it was probably seconded. It's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Favorable back to the full council. Uh, last one for the Chief, agenda item number seven, please. Order appropriation of $174,580.75 from the Executive Office of the Public Safety and Security State 911 Department Fiscal Year 17 State 911 Training Grant and EMD Regulatory <coughs> Compliance Grant. To the City of Brockton Police Department Fiscal Year 17 State 911 Training Grant and EMD Regulatory Compliance Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Chief John Crowley, Brockton Police Department. Chief, any further information? This is the 911 department <clears throat> for the purpose of offsetting overtime costs for police, police emergency, telephone dispatchers, fire emergency, medical dispatchers, personnel to attend mandated 16 hours of certified E911 training for the purpose of answering 911 calls, emergency medical response, police dispatching. Trainings are provided by the state, authorized vendors, and their cost is covered with these grants. Thank you, Chief. Motion recommend favorably. Second. Second. On the motion? Just, just on the motion, and maybe I picked up something I shouldn't, but the fire department does participate in some of this training or? Yes. Some of the grant funds? Okay. Thank you. The motion was made. It was a favorable recommendation. It was properly seconded. It's a favorable back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed? That motion <coughs> carries. Thank you, Chief. Have a good evening. Madam Clerk, that goes back favorable to the full council. Agenda item number eight, please. Order that the mayor and or real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land consisting of 530 square feet, more or less, located at the corner of Main Street and Hayward Ave, owned by Cumberland Farms Incorporated of 1813 Main Street, Brockton, Mass. More particularly described as shown on the plan attached here to said conveyance will correct an encroachment of the city sidewalk upon the property owned by Cumberland Farms, invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter. Benjamin Albanese, real estate custodian, Martin Brophy, clerk of the real estate committee. Mr. Treasurer, do you have anything about this? You could come forward, please, Mr. Brophy. <laughs> this item was referred both to the real estate committee and finance. That's correct, and then, and then it was held here, it was postponed at the last meeting. Correct. Uh, there hasn't been a real estate meeting yet. Um, Mr. Ch I spoke to Mr. Chairman, yeah. Councilor Rodriguez. He, he will be calling one. Yes. Is it your um, professional opinion that this should be sent back to the full council and then heard in real estate? In my opinion. can't go committee it, to committee, so. Um, then probably back to full council, and it's already been referred to real estate. It has been. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, you'll be calling that relatively soon? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I'm planning on doing that within uh, the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, so we can do that. So with that, I'd like to make a motion that it goes back to the full city council with, uh, with hopes that it would go back to, uh, to the uh, real estate committee. So it would be going back in a favorable recommendation? Correct. Second. Councilors, it's a favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed. That motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Brophy. It's favorable. Number eight is favorable back to the full city council. Number nine, Madam Clerk. Resolved to invite Brockton Fire Chief Michael F. Williams to the brief city council to brief the City Council on the recent ISO public protection classification. What we wish to learn more about the advantages to property owners and other benefits for the community. At this time, we would also want to learn more about National Grid's actions on preventing further manhole cover explosions in downtown Brockton. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Conan, Chief Financial Officer, Chief Michael F. Williams, Brockton Fire Department, Lawrence oh, Road, yeah, Commissioner, yeah, yeah. Department of Public Works. Good evening, Chief. 
Good evening, Council. First of all, I, I know publicly uh, as president of the council, I, I made a, uh, on behalf of the full council, uh, I, I gave some sentiments congratulating you and your staff and the men and women that serve. It's, a, it's really, it's a wonderful uh, honor, well thank deserved. Thank you, Council. So thank you very much. As a chief, please uh, thank you and please pass it on to you, uh, those that report to you as well. I will. So that thank being you. said, would you, would you like to respond to the resolve? Sure. We want to deal, would we deal with the ISO, <coughs> excuse me, the ISO factor first? Yes. Sure. Um, ISO basically reviews um, 48,000 wow. fire departments and, and fire organizations throughout the country. Um, it's an average of about every five years that it's done. Um, sometimes it goes a little bit longer depending on their scheduling. <clears throat> so we were scheduled for this last year, 2016. Um, they did their uh, analysis of our department back in August. Um, with their findings, it's, it's a point system that you're graded on, basically. And if you achieve enough points, um, you actually, that's how they determine the classification, by how many points you received. This past examination um, revealed that we gained enough points, which is in, in the uh, report that I, I distributed to the counselors, um, over 90 points. Excellent. Moves you up to a class one department. That's a huge, huge accomplishment. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, I can't take all the credit, obviously. I have, um, a lot of help from my department. Um, in particular, Deputy Chief Scott Albanese, Deputy Chief Kevin Galligan, uh, Deputy Chief Joseph Marchetti, and Captain Williams in the Fire Prevention Bureau. Um, all worked very hard in, in uh, supplying the ISO with the information they needed. And again, uh, also I'd like to recognize uh, Larry Rowley and the Water Department for their input. Um, a, lot, a big part of this uh, report is the water distribution system and the fire hydrant systems and how we are able to deliver water and the water department helped out a great deal. Great collaboration. Right. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Any questions to the Chief relative to the ISO? Nothing? Oh, Council Farwell. Just, just a comment because I, I, I don't think we should lose this moment that what you've accomplished proves that it's not necessarily how much money you spend. It's having the competent personnel, mm -hmm. having the appropriate training, maximizing use of whatever equipment you have. And I think that in addition to the, the benefits to the city and perhaps to people who pay homeowners insurance uh, should not be lost. So that's, uh, I mean, you could use more people, you could use more equipment, but you've really uh, focused in on, on this ISO certification process and it, it's a lot of work it's not you don't just throw some papers at some people right. uh, so uh, as I say I don't want to lose this moment of what the fire department has accomplished thank you counselor thank you counselor any other questions counselor Hi. <laughs> yeah. counselor I'm sorry I, I had filed the resolve and the, and the reason being one was to highlight this and to just get a little bit more of how this happens that you know it, it gives commercial properties and residential properties some savings correct from what I've been told from the ISO, <clears throat> it may not seem significant, but it is, it is a cut. Uh, residential may see, it may, it may be as much as a 1% savings in their, in their insurance, but commercial properties could see as much as a 3% savings. So in larger corporations or larger businesses in the city, let's say Westgate Mall, would see a, a much more significant savings. So I, I'm to understand that this information is, how would I say, uh, um, available to all these other um, insurance companies that sell residential or commercial insurance. Correct. A okay. lot of this information is very uh, available online. Okay, because that, I mean, I, I never knew, you know, about this until finding out. So, no, I was excited about that. Congratulations. And, Mr. Chair, if I can go to the next part we of this. We just had Council Cruz oh, had a I'm question sorry. on that. Thank you. Good. Council. Uh, just actually a comment. First of all, congratulations to the department. And I think it's very important for us to remember the second part of what the chief mentioned is uh, when we ha have to sit down and make some of those difficult choices about the uh, water uh, rates, it's important in this aspect that the water system be kept in in excellent condition that we have the two sources of water that uh, when when we uh, have to make those rate uh, decisions that there are pluses that, that happen to this that affect the, affect the public and we need to keep that in mind so thank you to both departments for the the uh, the work it's a very important very important thing for uh, and it helps your property values when people are looking to buy houses that you're in a 
in a highly ranked uh, uh, number. So thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, thank you for your reminder. Thank you. It's 100% on point. Any other questions relative to this specific item? Council Beauregard. Okay. You wanted to follow up on the uh, second part of the resolve? Yes, yes, because this was a very positive thing, and we like to focus on the positive, but sometimes we have the negative, and here we go with the underground explosions here through Brockton um, that began, you know, this year. This is, um, what, the 17th paper, January, and this concerns me because individuals from your team, your department, have to go out there. And I imagine it is quite a stressful situation. Now, you're protecting us, but who is, I mean, who's responsible for this problem, I guess, is, and, you know, how do we work this through? Because this is not it, right for any. <clears throat> Chief, and again, yeah. as much as you can answer, a lot of this deals with National Grid, which is a private utility, and we could call them in and resolve as well. Exactly. So anything that you could exactly. offer, Chief, would be great. And, Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I have a, a a list of bullet points that in a meeting that I had with National Grid, I thought it would be better if the councilors could have a paper copy. Be very helpful. Sure. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. So, Councilors, in meeting with National Grid, um, some short-term and long-term solutions to this, this issue were discussed. Um, the second paragraph actually explains the two incidents that happened here in Brockton. Um, the incident that happened last summer was burning polyethylene service cable, and the incident that happened on Martin Luther King Day was actually a, a paper substance and some lead wiring that was actually burning in the manhole so it's two basically two different wow. lines but they're they all they're all considered secondary electrical lines that are in these manholes um and i don't know if you noticed the construction going on out here mm -hmm. the past few weeks or since the martin luther king incident uh, national grid along with clean harbors is actually in these manholes trying to clean them out um, remove some of these secondary lines that either are it, not being used at this time. Um, they're designed to burn away and, and, and stop the flow of electricity, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, there's roughly 136 manholes in the downtown area that this, these problems affect. Um, as of Friday, 20 have been, been uh, taken care of. Um, it's an ongoing process that they're continuing to, to look at. Um, and it, it, gives you the, uh, an explanation of what's being done in each manhole. Um, one of the major issues National Grid feels is if they give a, a venting type of manhole cover. Um, they can't do all of them because it does let water into the manhole, so they have to be careful about where they put these venting manhole covers. So that, that aspect is being looked at. Um, and then in the long term, um, more surveys and inspections of these manholes and the cable replacement is being looked at. Uh, their engineering department is dealing with much of this, um, trying to decipher where these vent manholes should go. Um, we're going to continue between National Grid and the Brockton Fire Department to address these issues uh, for safety reasons and also um, for drilling opportunities in the future to uh, stay abreast of how we're going to deal with this situation. God forbid it happens again. Um, I will let you know that we're not alone. Um, these types of incidents happen in the city of Boston, the city of Worcester, um, on much more occasions than these two that we've had in, in the city of Brockton. Chief, thank you. And also, thank you for taking the time to compile this. Sure. It's very, very helpful. Council Borg, as you resolve, do you have any further information or questions? Well, first of all, I wanted to thank you for this. The reason I called you up, and yes, we'll probably call up National Grid at one point, is because you're the first responders, your team, and I, I can't imagine what it's like. I mean, the one in July, 
just seemed, and it seemed like it smelled for the longest time. Right. I mean, maybe because it was summer, what have you. And one, it's dangerous for people, dangerous for buildings, and then, of course, these businesses were closed. So that's three things that aren't to anyone's advantage. The second time around, I guess I wanted to look at it, too, to find out if it was something we were doing wrong, it's something they were doing wrong, or it's something that's just going to happen regardless because of age, environment, and activity. I think that's exactly it, Council. A lot of it is the age of, of the systems in, the, in these manholes. They are looking at <clears throat> some of the conduit that goes into each business wasn't properly sealed in the first place, so they're looking at that aspect so that should some of these gases or smoke conditions exist, it doesn't protrude into the businesses themselves as it did on a couple of these occasions. No, thank you very much, and um, you know, thank you for this report. And again, this info and lets people know what's going on and how would I say um, that this is solution driven. So thank you for your time and energy in this report. I appreciate You're welcome. it. welcome. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Council, I do want to thank you for doing this resolve. I, I, uh, I did find it troubling uh, that the City Council wasn't notified about this event uh, from City Hall. Uh, we actually, uh, I found out about it online, the Enterprise, uh, and that's unacceptable. So. Uh, I will be talking to the mayor about better communications uh, on such events like this that I know our constituents were calling uh, each and every one of us about. A any other questions on this resolve? Council Monahan. I just want, Chief, just out of curiosity, <coughs> when you talk to them, do they normally survey their underground lines as, as a, on a I, I, regular basis like we, what, always, we have to do? To ours? what extent, I'm not sure of what, what type of schedule they have to go into these manholes and inspect uh, that. I did, I did not ask them. Um, okay, because I mean, obviously, in the future, correct. We're going to still have they're still underground. They haven't gone any place. So exactly. All right, just was wondering on that. Okay, thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wherever you are. Thank you, Mr. Council. Chairman. <laughs> Council, is there any other questions? Jim. Council Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Council, for filing this. These secondary lines that are, that are burning um, uh, with their faults. Are they only in the higher business district, or are these lines across the city? I believe they're across the city. I'm so, not positive on that. But so these two events happen to be have been within a couple blocks of each other, but mm -hmm. the whole city is basically wired the same way. Correctly. And one thing I'm just not sure if I'm reading it right or if I'm extrapolating, is some of this wiring not used anymore, and it was never taken out? So I as they replaced, so. they just... Uh, it, if it's yeah, if it's terminated, it's just left in place. And they're looking at probably taking that out. Correct. Because uh, so that that can burn even though it's not live. Right. So we need to get them to to remove. I mean, yeah. that could be a pretty major project. But through the years, in other words, as they've replaced lines and updated, they've left the old. Correct. And that the danger is the, the buildup of gas and chemical in these. In and these then that's my last question: How toxic are these fumes? Uh, very, very, very. Yes, obviously they're explosive. And, Correct. You know, yeah. So you know, I'm sure, they're full of carcinogens and. So we you. probably need to look at either ordinance or somehow forcing them to start to take out all these all these lines. That I'm not sure of, Councillor, but it, it's possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief. You're thank very you very welcome. much. That was very very helpful. Uh, Councillor, what's, what's, your, what's your will of this? Okay, so I guess w what we're going to do at this point is uh, postpone this so that we can have National Grid explain themselves a little bit more here. Sure. And again, we want to thank you for your time. And You're then welcome. The form of a motion. Postpone form of a motion. Motion to, motion to, made to postpone. Second. Postpone. Second. Second. postpone to one? I don't know. <coughs> Councillor, do you want to postpone it to uh, first FinCom next month? To give Why them don't we time? say the second? Film calm next month. The second film calm yes. in March. Okay, the second film calm in March. Okay. Yes, we'll be, we'll, postpone we'll, it to we'll, the next. We'll, we'll invite the representatives from National Grid. National Grid, and then acquire any more further information or dialogue that you've okay. had with us. Thank sure. you very much. Form of motion. We have a second. second. Yeah. Postpone to the second film calm in March. All in favor? All opposed. That motion carries. Madam Clerk, again, it's postponed to the second film calm in the month of March. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Good evening. Thank We're you. We're going to go on to agenda. The last agenda item, which is number ten, Madam Clerk. Resolved to invite Ms. Carol Gladstone, Commissioner of the Department of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, DCAM, and the Deputy Commissioner Elizabeth Minnis to inform the City Council of the future plans for the Ganley building that is currently owned by the state and was originally going to become a city <coughs> campus for higher
higher education. Invited Honorable Mary Bill Carpenter, John A. Conn, and Chief Financial Officer, Carol Gladstone, Commissioner of DCAM, Elizabeth Minister, Deputy Commissioner of DCAM. Uh, Council Borg, did you file this resolve, correct? Yes, I did with the support of uh, many colleagues because many of us are finding it extremely frustrating to see the uh, Ganley building in the condition that it's in. At this time... Well, it does, yeah, yeah. with that, I, I know Mr. Connors is here. He's one of the invited guests, but I think that really the crust was to try to get DCAM, someone from the state, to be here. I don't believe anybody... Is anyone here from DCAM? No, we don't see Seeing anyone. none, Councillor. Uh, well, seeing information? none... Um, yes, I do have information. I've been speaking with our um, senator, state senator, and he himself is also frustrated with the situation. Um, at this time, he's spoken to more than one member of uh, this department and myself as well. And what we uh, propose to do, he has spoken with the lieutenant governor and he has the support of several of his colleagues at the state house. So at this point, um, I want to keep this resolve, postpone this resolve, and um, the senator could not make it this evening at a previous engagement so that we could, um, in at, um, for a, the second FinCon meeting in March, <coughs> so we could have, once again, more information on and, this. And with that, and, and I will entertain a motion on that, but I also, as you know, I had filed a resolve about the Ganley, and that's been postponed since the last session last year. Um, we'll make sure that they piggyback in their herd the same night, which will be the second FinCom in March. Yes. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion made properly seconded. Anything on the motion? No? Uh, to uh, postpone agenda item number 10 till the second finance in March. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carries. Madam Clerk, again, second FinCom in March postponement, please. Anything, uh, Council, Council Cruz? Thank you. Moment of personal privilege, Absolutely, please. Absolutely, sir. I'd just like to take a moment to... Uh, Unfortunately, inform the council of the graying of the council. We are now a council without a teenage member. <laughs> As of today, we have the 20th birthday for Council Lally, and I want to wish Yay! him a happy birthday. <clears throat> so now we just have Council Monahan, who acts like a teenager, but we have a grown up. But congratulations and happy thank, birthday. Thank you. Happy thank you very birthday, much. Councilor. <laughs> Any other moments of personal privilege? Councillor, the birthday boy. Yes. While we're, while we're continuing with the, uh, the birthday theme, I would uh, like to take a moment to wish a very happy birthday to my mother, who, uh, who has her birthday tomorrow. Oh. Very nice. Turning Let's see how smart you again. are. Let's see how smart you are. How old is she? 35. He just said 35. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you, if you weren't so old, you could have heard what he said. <laughs> what? And councils, I'm going to fall in the same vein. I have three birthdays this week. Uh, tomorrow is my mother-in-law's birthday, Lorraine Louise. Happy birthday, Lorraine. My son, Tommy, my oldest, is going to be 10 on Thursday the 9th. And my wife, uh, Maria, will be X on Friday the 10th. So uh, happy birthday to all of them. Uh, councils, I also want to thank each and every one of you um, for being so uh, uh, accessible when we had to uh, do a, uh, a remote uh, meeting at the Arnold School. Um, the elevator's been fixed, that's why we're able to have it here. But again, we, we, we kind of had to juggle some things. I want to thank each and every one of you. Also, I just want to inform you, uh, last Friday I had a, uh, this is my second tour of Grow Associates, uh, which is based in Randolph, but 50% of the clients at Grow are from the city of Brockton. I took a tour again, it's for mentally uh, impaired individuals. I took a, a tour again last Friday with Senator Brady and State Rep, our former colleague, State Rep, Rep Dubois. It's really, it's a wonderful, uh, institution. The CEO is a Ward 1 resident. He lives on Pearl Street, Bill Wasserman. And really, it was, it was eye opening to see that 50% of that clientele is here from the City of Champions. So, again, I want to thank everything that they do. Anything else before us? Councilor? Uh, yes, just a uh, public safety announcement for scheduling purposes. The public Safety Committee will be meeting at 6 p.m. on March 6th. Uh, Attorney Gilday is sending out some notices to some people who have some pending matters before us, but I know there'll be competition for dates and times with other subcommittees. So March 6th at 6 p.m. there will be a public safety committee meeting. Excellent. Thank you, Council. Anybody else? Uh, just to Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure if we're on the same page, but we, I'd like to congratulate the uh, Patriots for winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this sure. is from Yes. yes. <laughs> that was historic. 
historic. Uh, Council Cruz. Uh, Count, just to let uh, the ordinance members know, I'll be announcing a date of a meeting next Monday night at Council. Probably in the next two weeks, we'll have we'll start getting going on the new ordinance committee. Thank so, you. So, thank you. If the ordinance members could let me know if they have any bad nights, let me know so before we announce. Well, that's thank good, Council. So, so real estate will be meeting soon. Ordinance will be meeting soon. Public safety <coughs> has a date. So, uh, thank you for everything you guys are doing. There's nothing else before us. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.